So the company was started in 2007, originally by my brother. He was working in the wine industry and at the time he wanted to be able to advise private clients on fine wine from an investment perspective. I actually left university in 2009. I spoke to my brother and I was really interested in actually learning a little bit more about this as a business proposition and taking it from what was originally an advisory service for a handful of clients and actually looking to scale it up and actually take it to a broader market and really build a business around fine wine investment. In terms of a new company, um, the first couple of years are always difficult because you know, you're really trying to make a name for yourself, you're trying to establish a reputation, but also in an unregulated investment class like wine, there's always going to be questions or concerns from customers about you know, provenance and security of their asset and actually track record because we'd only been around for a very short period of time. So I think that first one to two years was about building a client base, about building our revenues and actually showing people that this could actually work. We'd actually managed to establish a credible business and something that was working and something that we felt that had a lot more potential in the future. At that point in time, my father, Phil, joined the company as chairman and he really brought a lot of experience and uh, professionalism to the business and really helped us grow and really helped us you know, take the business to the next level. This business was always going to be one that the first few years was going to be slow in terms of building up clients, building up trust, building up reputation, but most importantly, building up a track record when it came to investing in wine. So what we've actually seen over the last few years is quite a significant increase in our sales turnover, quite a significant increase in our assets under management, quite significant international expansion into overseas markets. To put that into perspective, in 2013, our annual turnover was around five and a half million pounds, whereas this year in 2018, five years later, it's grown tenfold and is currently 52 and a half million pounds. As a business, fine wine is a global asset and the investment industry of course is global. You know, people all over the world, whether you're from the more established Western markets or in the Far East, people are looking for new opportunities to invest their money into. So from day one, we've always had international interest. We've always managed to secure clients from other regions outside, say, the UK and Europe. However, from 2014 onwards, we took a much more focused approach to actually developing our overseas business. And in 2016, we opened our first office in Hong Kong. And in 2018, we opened our first office in Singapore. So we now currently have three offices internationally, two in the Asian market, and one obviously in the UK that deals with the rest of the world. I think one of the reasons we've been more successful than other wine companies in the last few years growing our business is that we've always been very focused on the personal side of things. You know, we've tried to make this a personal investment cycle where each individual client has a tailor-made approach they have their own dedicated portfolio manager and we really do provide a personalized service for each individual and we understand each individual's needs and this is more than just buying a few cases of wine sticking them in a cellar forgetting about them for five years suddenly remembering you having them calling someone up and saying oh i've got these wines how much they worth? should i sell them ours is much more proactive we take a real interest in each of our clients' portfolios. We're proactively managing them. If some wines aren't performing well, we'll be on that. And we'll be telling our clients and we'll be hopefully getting them into better performing wines. But overall, it's a much more tailored, personalized service. And I think in this day and age, you have to have that to separate yourself from the competition. I think that's probably one of the main reasons that we've had such customer loyalty. And I think that's why we'll continue to have such good brand loyalty in the future. I think the one thing that makes Cult Wines different is the culture that we've developed. And that's not just about the people that work here. I mean, obviously I'm very lucky to work in a business with my father and obviously before with my brother, so it was a family business. But I think we've actually extended that throughout the staff that we've taken on. And whilst we've been growing, we've been very cautious and very insistent on making sure that we can still retain our culture, whether we have an office on the other side of the world or whether it's recruiting new people here into the UK. But that also extends into our relationship with clients. We want people to buy into our culture. We want people to buy into what we're trying to sell them, which is an opportunity to invest in a product which is going to deliver on more than just one front. It's more than just a nuts and bolts figurative investment where people are going to make profit. It's about a journey and it's about establishing personal relationships. And I think in terms of this type of business, that's probably one of the most important things we've always tried to keep very much at the forefront of our minds.